Hi dear traders, last trading week was a turning point for the market as the optimistic sentiment finally prevailed. Investors seem to have downplayed the fact that the US Federal Reserve will continue to tighten its monetary policy. On the contrary, the expectations of a rate hike have eased. So Wall Street has finally ended its long losing streak. For the first time in four weeks, major indices have posted gains. Trading on Friday was a key moment as it was marked with the biggest gain. The Dow Jones closed 823 points up, the S&P 500 added 3% and the Nasdaq rose by 3.3%. The upside potential is still in place, although the market opened this week very cautiously. Investors anticipate a new big bunch of data and the downgrading of macroeconomic forecasts. Later, the data on GDP will be released and Jerome Powell will make a statement. Market participants will also focus on U.S. personal income and spending data and the key indicator of inflation, the consumer price index. Besides, the IOSM manufacturing index will also be published. Since the Fed sees fighting inflation as its highest priority, the report on consumer prices will be especially important. The new reading may either increase or lower market expectations above the, about a further rate hike. Stay with us, watch this video till the end and share your opinion in the comments. Last week, Jerome Powell's testimony to U.S. Congress was in the focus of attention. The first day of his testimony was marked with high volatility. At first, stock indices slumped amid aggressive rhetoric, but then they jumped when the issue of decreasing demand was mentioned. Investors took it as a signal that the Fed will not hike the rate to the level of 3.4% by the end of the year. However, the indices dropped again as market participants evaluated the comment by the Fed chair that a rate hike of 100 basis points was also possible. So there was a short roller coaster ride that resulted in a slight decline on Wednesday. On Thursday and Friday, the stock market entered positive territory. Jerome Powell warned that a rate hike may lead to a recession and that there is a high risk of rising unemployment. The recent macroeconomic data only intensifies these worries. On the other hand, a looming recession dampens the sentiment on Wall Street. But recent estimates of inflation raised hopes that the U.S. regulator will slow down the pace on its monetary tightening. According to the University of Michigan survey, consumer sentiment in June dropped to a record low, while inflation expectations for the next 5-10 years fell to 3.1% from 3.3%. By the large, Powell's words didn't have much impact on the market. They just confirmed that the regulator will stick to its plan and will continue to increase rates. However, this factor has already been priced in by the market. Several Fed officials, including Michelle Bauman and Christopher Waller, are advocating for another 75 basis points rate hike at the next meeting in July. And now let's have a look at the indices. The Dow Jones Industrial Average rose by 5.4%. The weekly results changed the market expectations. Previously, the prospect was gloomy and the bear market was strong. However, today these views are changing. Some analysts even say that this bear market was just a deep correction within a long-term bullish trend. So the scenario from 2020 may repeat itself. If we turn to trading history, the biggest decline in 116 days was last recorded in 1932. At the same time, chances are high that the stock market will close this year on a positive note. It's hard to predict the further track of the market, although there are some forecasts that may help us to understand it. According to Goldman Sachs, there are three types of bear markets – structural, cyclical and event-driven. The current situation implies that there are we are dealing with the second type of the bear market. Its outcome is usually short-lived and lasts no longer than two quarters. Knowing the type of the bear market, we can predict the possible dynamics of future rallies. 
Goldman Sachs also thinks that the rally we witnessed last week may well continue until a new wave of a sell-off starts. The S&P 500 may gain another 5 to 7 percent before resuming its decline. The broad-based S&P 500 index showed impressive results last week, having gained 6.5 percent and ended a three-week losing streak. This was the biggest growth since May 2020. On the other hand, the situation is not so optimistic. Last week, the index entered a bear market and its losses have reached 21 percent since the start of the year. Actually, the S&P 500 is at risk of closing the first six months of the year with the worst decline since 1932. In the second quarter, a lot will depend on whether recession hits or not. In case there is no strong economic downturn, the key U.S. indices may leave negative territory and perform a strong rebound. Some large investment banks say that there is a 50% likelihood of a recession. It may start either in the fourth quarter of 2022 or in 2023. As for the S&P 500 index, its prospects depend on the pace of a rate hike by the Fed and its consequences. If the regulator is less aggressive than expected, then the stock market may see a corrective rally. In the meantime, the S&P 500 index is trading within the downtrend. The mark of 4,000 points will serve as strong resistance. The Nasdaq 100 index went up by 7.5%. U.S. stocks reversed to the upside and on optimistic comments from one of the Fed members, James Bullard. According to the official, fears of a U.S. recession are overblown. Given a strong labor market and positive household balance sheet, this optimism may be justified. Besides, inflation hasn't reached its peak yet. At the same time, investors are buying up stocks at attractive prices, hoping that inflation will soon easy and the U.S. economy will remain strong. Wall Street probably believes that recession may be short-lived. Meanwhile, the International Monetary Fund has significantly lowered its forecast for GDP growth for this year to 2.9% from 3.7%. The estimates for 2023 have also been revised to 1.7% vs 2.3%. The Fed assumes that the U.S. economy will expand by only 1.7% in the next two years. On Thursday, the third estimate of Q1 GDP will be published. According to it, the forecast of a 1.5% decline should stay the same. The current situation is definitely a bear market. Yet everything can change if some large retailers issue optimistic forecasts. Thus, earnings reports from Nike, H&M, Walgreens, Boots Alliance and Bed Bath & Beyond may become a good driver for the stock market. As for Nike, its stocks rebounded last week. This happened amid news that the company will cease its activities in Russia and in the coming months. This reaction is surprising given that Nike received about 1% of its revenue from Russian consumers, which is actually not so much for such a big company. Perhaps it was an attempt to capitalize on anti-Russian sentiment before the publication of a quarterly report from which the markets didn't expect anything good. The current rebound is likely to be temporary and the shares will continue to test support. Warren Buffett's favorite company, American Express, also looked promising. It has faced some turbulence recently as its shares tumbled to a new 52-week low. At the moment, American Express is trading 11.7% lower compared to the start of the year. There, are, there were two big drops in the first six months in mid-February and mid-June. Although there was a slight recovery, the stocks were still, are still trading 
29% below their peak levels. Such a rapid drop has created a good possibility to buy the shares of American Express. Besides, there are various positive factors for this. The general long-term outlook remains optimistic. Some experts agree that fair price of American Express should be $192 per share, which implies growth of 36%. Financial reports will be revealed on July 20. For your reference, the company's first quarter results beat market expectations and its yearly forecast was also confirmed. Currently, the shares of American Express may be a good choice in the existing bear market. We continue to monitor the market to keep you up to date. Please subscribe to the channel and leave your comments below. We are here for you with the most relevant video reviews prepared every day and every week. That's all for today. See you soon.